This is everything you need to know about the 2025 Roost 43, straight from the horse's mouth, the guy that's named after. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know all that. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the RV Voice. Today we got a different one for you. It is the probably the biggest home on wheels that you can get. It is pushing about 18 plus thousand pounds dry. This thing is massive. It's pushing 44 foot long. And we're talking to, I believe, the designer who made this thing and who is actually named after her. After it is the Roost 43. And we're talking with Nick Ross today. Nick, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, let's kind of start with your background. How long you've been in the business? Uh, what got you to this point of, uh, with Forest River? And... Uh, just kind of start there, brag about yourself a little bit. Absolutely, Jake. Great to be here. Thanks for having me today. Um, mm -hmm. We're obviously excited about our most recent release of the Roost uh, 43. Um, just to make a little correction here, um, this technically was not named after me. Um, we just lost last, connection for a second. The last name here. is Ross. However, you know, we all kind of like to kind of be the be the uh, quiet giants, if you would. Huh. Um, what actually happened, I'm gonna, I'll tell you this just so we can um, kind of get the background of it. So yeah, obviously my name's Rost. Yeah, they call me Rooster sometimes. <laughs> um, ultimately, um, let, me, let me track back here a little bit. I started in the industry in uh, 2005 um, as an actual, I was a receiver and they did some purchasing and decided that i wanted i liked relationships i like to um you know be on the road and grow relationships with our dealer partners so my a lot of my friends and and uh um, gentlemen within the industry that enjoyed it so i'm um, just kind of knocked on doors was able to get an opportunity with salem hemisphere um thankfully um, back in the day that started in 2012 through the years kind of got promoted to a product sales manager for Salem Hemisphere. Um, a partner um, with Heritage Glen is John Stephenson. Um, he's been with with me now for seven years. So great team. Um, very blessed to be a part of Forest River. Um, but back to the roost here. Um, so it was one of those things when we have a new model, um, we have to have a um, model designator for our engineering department to get kind of kicked off here, started out. Um, and it was a couple names got thrown around out of the gate. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, we, we did a AI on homes, tiny homes, places to dwell. And I, and there was 10, 12 names and roost came yeah. up and harvest our <laughs> apologies, not harvest, um, the dwell, the, you know, obviously we got to be careful too with trademarks, anything like that, but. Ultimately, I fought it for two months. Our, you know, some, our designer and my partner John um, Stephenson was like, "Hey, the Roost is a, a perfect name. It's, you know, it's a place to to dwell and rest." And I'm like, no, we're not doing it. We're not <laughs> doing that because there's a lot of folks involved in this in this project, from engineering department to our great production team mm -hmm. um, and designer, everyone. So never one to take credit for things. We all put a lot of hard work into this, but at the end of the day, we're proud of it. Um, it's the Roost 43. Um, so ultimately we were challenged. Um, it's been, it was probably end of last year. We were challenged to um, take advantage of the square footage we have with the fifth wheels. Mm -hmm. So some people may know this. Some people may not. Um, Salem Wildwood, um, if anybody knows destination trailers at Salem Wildwood, um, they own 20 to 20, 25 to 27 percent market share um, of all destination travel trailers. However, they are capped at 399 square feet. They cannot build anything over 399 square feet. That is um, the rules, the, the laws. That's that's the way it is. Um, and so ultimately, the fifth wheel side about four or five years ago, um, they lifted the restrictions on square footage. Now that's limited to state rules of square footage and height, and you got to be under 13.6. 
but we were challenged to give the customer what they want, more square footage. Um, through a lot of research and looking through tiny homes and different applications of how we were going to execute this, um, came up with a game plan and it wasn't easy, right? You have to come up with a actual floor plan that, that meets the um, expectations of a broad um, customer base. So we could um, obviously be successful with a launch. Um, and then it's just functionality ultimately too. So, and not only that, no one in the industry or the, the main RV manufacturers have not designed or executed a floor plan like this with this much square footage. So I said the 399 square feet, that's your destination trailer limitations. So we have a similar length. This, this Roost 43 is 43 feet, nine inches. Um, we have a same length in a two full bedroom, two full bath that I'm sure you're aware of. It's a 375 fam. Um, that unit has 430 square feet without the loft. So how do we take it to a, the next, the next um, step here? How do we top that? Um, what we did with the roost, it's 530 square feet um, of actual living space without the loft. And so we're answering that bell to the customers who want the extended stays. Um, in addition, the the coolest thing about it, it's versatile, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've had customers through our phenomenal launch this um, we we had all of our influencers. Josh, the RV nerd, um, was definitely part of that and excited about it. Um, over forty five million views throughout all platforms, which was exceeded our expectations, obviously, but. Um, 530 square feet and how do we do that this is a wide body um something we're not accustomed to so we took some time and doing some research on that how do we execute it how do we secure materials if this goes off like we plan on it going off and and performing so wide body we do have underslung dexter axles and that's triple axles we went with the triple axles so we can go with the shorter 15 inch tires to be able to gain more square footage um, in addition inside. Um, and then in addition, the roof. So this was one of those things. How do we execute the roof to get our max square footage again, um, but still have um, it perform well when it's out in the elements? So what it is, is the roof is actually sloped from the door side down to the off door side. Um, then it comes into play, hey, we got to be under 13 feet six inches we can't exceed that so what we did was we executed the acs with low profile um low profile 15k acs and they're on that slope side down on the off door side so we could be at <laughs> five inches so again you know as we're, we're talking through this this wasn't you know everybody everybody's got their 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 strengths and weaknesses, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, our production team is is phenomenal at you know figuring out how to execute things through R and D. Um, a lot of times, myself and and John will go, "Hey, you know, this is what we want. How do we accomplish it?" We'll mock something up on the floor. A lot of this, a lot of this design was mocked up on the floor because we didn't know. We didn't know how. You know, we wanted to make sure the living room wasn't going to feel too. Um, like a cave, if you will. So we built that up on the floor, try to get that max height in there while still allowing that loft in the rear to accommodate the kids or adults. In that case, if they want to get up there and have a comfy night's sleep, play cards, whatever it may be. So a lot of this was done on the ground. So when we built that first proto, we're not sitting here going, oh, this is this is screwed up. Now, did we make tweaks? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but out of the gate, if you if you sit there and have your your meetings and you go through, you know, building things in the ground and understanding, hey, this will work, the functionality of this will work, it feels good, then you can move on to the next step of the actual frame and proto process. And even the frame when it comes to this, it's a completely um, different setup on the frame. Obviously there's there's a lot of unique things which we'll talk about on the on the Roost 43. Mm -hmm. um, but overall Hey, 
the the comments the first couple of weeks when we launched that we spent a lot of time on the weekends whatever it may be going going through right this is our feedback from our retail customers um which is what i one of the things i love about the rv industry it's a you know a lot of units go out but in the so kind of like a family if you will the, the retail customers our dealer body and our actual uh, manufacturers and and uh so so yeah this is um definitely been a, a really fun project our, our production team and we um, actually launched this on a friday i um, believe it was the first week of august um we had a pizza party of course for all of our production staff just in our conference room next to me mm -hmm. uh, you would have been amazed everyone was on their phones you know kind of a celebratory day after you put in all the hard work uh, with this thing launching and you're just watching the the views go you know just, viral in a matter of yeah. days. and so yeah. but we're we definitely took the customer feedback again um looking at things and making sure you know we we executed um everything in all facets and uh, again, moving forward, you know, the plan is to release um, an additional roost model um, and the one behind that. But however, um, all that feedback helps out. It's not for everyone, obviously, but the the success we've had on the roost so far, um, we definitely had a great, great launch. So we're, we're definitely excited about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I just kind of I mean, I just recently heard about it. I'm a little behind on the game sometimes. And I'm, I, I talk with influencers a lot as well because they do the full-time RVing life, and that's becoming more and more of a thing. Right. This Roost model is obviously gaining traction because it's it takes the home on wheels to a totally different level than before. And it's legit. I mean, I was watching just Josh's today, and I kind of you know, kind of prepping myself for this conversation and holy guacamole, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can live in that thing just fine. I have no problems in there. Now, it's a lot too much for me, but then the fact that you said there's other models coming out, I'm really excited to see what that is, but pushing from 399 to 530 square feet, that's a huge difference Absolutely. in small places when you make, you know, every inch, every square foot matters, but this is more of a parking model versus a you know, traveling down the road, going all the sorts, but I'm excited to hear more about it. All right. Well, dude, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to see, uh, see one more about this thing. And, uh, the slope roof thing cracks me up. I come from the construction background. So like making everything yep. that <laughs> he's got to fit under standards and all that. Absolutely. Um, so I have a real quick question before we dive into it. The, you said that like the Salem, not the Salem, the Wildwood, uh, say, uh, Wildwood Salem's. Yeah. Yep. Well, they, that was kind of the 399, 399 square foot was kind of the max out. Why is that? Why was that a max out? That is just the um, the actual the actual rules in place by RVDA. I mean, that's that's a uh, that's your actual parameters. I don't under I don't know the whole you know story behind why that is. Okay. Um, however, you know when you're when you're talking about a destination fifth wheel uh -huh. say, you know and we thought it out of the gate you know i had a feeling we had a feeling that there would be customers that want to pull this thing and yeah. why because there's there's customers out there that have the trucks mm -hmm. we mentioned the weight and i want to hit on that real quick so out of the gate through the proto process earlier this spring you know obviously we we focused on you know ultimate construction um reliable product um, however we wanted to make sure we focused on the weight so more customers could maneuver um, the roost 43 around and and make it more versatile like i mentioned so we we actually got the weight um, down to 15,300 pounds and that's the uvw the unloaded dry weight um, oh more importantly um, your actual hitch weight for the roost 43 is 2800 pounds so very very manageable as far as i mean is it is it heavier than most fifth wheels sure but at the yeah. same token there's a lot of these three quarter ton diesels that can handle that that roost it's all ultimately about your your payload and what you're pulling on you know your hitch weight's going to be so it was very exciting when we got those final numbers in because a lot of the um, customers are saying hey i want to pull this you know can i pull this around well do what you want to do. Some people just want the biggest, baddest fifth wheel. Um, they might be parking it by a lake, but still want the option of being mm -hmm. able to go 
to see their kids in um, the West Coast or whatever it may be. So you can hook up to the roost and shoot on out there. So it's very versatile uh, product. Um, and through talking with several, um, obviously we did test runs with this roost. We took it out to um, Oregon. We took it out, we're up in Indiana, so we took it down and around through Kentucky, um, had the, the runs come back, talked to the drivers, um, some of our partners um, on the transport side. And these, tr these truck drivers were like, hey, you know, we've pulled destination trailers and it's usually one of those that you flip a coin and you hope you don't get the, the wrong end of the deal. But we went to pull this, wasn't sure what to expect, but man, this thing pulled really well. Hmm. Um, that's the triple axle. Um, you still part of it. You're not your actual front end is shaped more like a destination trailer. However, yep. you still have your gooseneck portion that comes down so the air can flow down through that. Um, so it's good to hear. I have not pulled one personally um, as of yet, but I'm hearing that they pull very, extremely well. Uh, one of the things we include um, with the three windows on front of the roost is we have a vinyl, um, it's actually like a, a bra, if you would, that mm -hmm. ratchets in four spots that covers the windows up. So um, just for precautionary measures, you can put that on when you're in transit that will come with um, your roost models um, uh, when you see them on the lot there. But um, just trying to think through um, how we can offer the customer the best experience possible. Yeah, and that's kind of standard. That vinyl wrap's kind of standard on the Salem Hemisphere in general. Yeah, right? it's, anyone with a front window or anything. It, yeah, so um, any any shipment that goes to the West Coast, we do put the the actual bra, if you will, on the on the front, the cover to protect your your front cap. I know with yep. the salt and and stuff out there on some yep. of these major highways, that that definitely benefits you. Awesome. Well, yeah, that I'm really curious to how you cut the three thousand ish pounds. So I'm I'm ready to hear about that. Um. Let's see here. Let's get this thing in here. You want to start sharing your screen or how do you want to jump into yeah, it? Absolutely. Right. So there one of the go. numbers you may have had, Jake, just to clarify, is you may have had the GVWR, which okay. is your cargo carrying capacity plus your unloaded vehicle weight, which would okay. get you up there by that 18,000. And originally it did come out at 16,200 pounds, um, but throughout the three or four months we shaved it down. So um that might have been the number you had originally so just to keep you guys informed yep, um, I'll, so, I'll stamp something over that when i said it yeah. <laughs> i was wrong <laughs> no it's we had a couple different numbers out of the gate so yeah definitively it's 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 very very manageable more manageable than we thought and um that's very that's very encouraging again making it more versatile absolutely so what we have here um obviously being we have we have a full line of you know travel trailers in the salem um hemisphere wildwood heritage glen lineup um your hyperlights your full-size trailers and you go into your full-size fifth wheels your elite series fifth wheels but with this product being um sort of a a new um build if you will um, with a wide body and whatnot we created a little packet here just to kind of um, explain what the roost is and what it's um, composed of. So I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, so every roost model, roost 43 model, um, with with Bish um, being the being the partner that that you guys are, um, you're going to be um, eligible for the elevated value package. So um, this is our our package we have throughout our series, configured a little bit different with the with a Roost 43, but that's gonna include your your high-end solid surface countertops, mm -hmm. um, your, your maple stained um, wood secondary tops, um, your square windows. Square windows is something that a lot of folks will go in the, the Hemisphere product, Heritage Glen product and look and go, man, these windows look different. You got nice trim around them, painted trim. There's no bulky balances. Um, so we changed these windows last year, the Roost, um, does have these windows and the cool thing about the roost you're going to have more windows in most cases um, but the, the the actual shade is built into the window trim which no light is going to be able to come through when you pull that shade down it's got a reflective foil backing um, that is on the inside so it reflects that heat from the coach 
Um, so that's going to be part of your elevated value package as well. The JBL sound system. So this is new for Salem Wildwood, um, Salem Hemisphere Wildwood Heritage Glen. This is um, JBL. We went with the, the two speakers on the inside, the two speakers on the outside. Everyone's familiar with the JBL system, very crisp, but we took it to the next level with the roost. Um, and we did the, um, the subwoofer with the upgraded uh, face um, on your entertainment center. So you do have a subwoofer that's part of this package on every single roost. Um, the 60K on-demand um, tankless water heater. That is um, something standard or part of the elevated value package on the roost as well throughout the whole series. Two um, 15K ACs. Now, this is the, the promotion we ran on the roost out of the gate here. This is the third AC is free for um, a limited time. So three ACs on the roost. Um, each AC will come with an RV airflow diverter. Um, some of um, some 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 people are familiar with this. Some customers are familiar with it. Most of our dealers are. This is a um, aftermarket part that started out. Basically, what it does is it it diverts your air more. Um, it, it's more efficiently, so mm -hmm. you get forty percent more airflow, which leads to better cooling. Um, and it's also going to quiet those ACs down, which these are already pretty quiet, but makes it where you could hardly hear those ACs running. Um, here's another one, your your side by side washer dryer, which is um, part of the roost package, elevated package here. And that's free for a limited time. So that was our intro um, to our to our dealers and our customers are taking advantage of that right now. Mm -hmm. And then you obviously have your Alley gray. This is a new color for us. We decided to, to carry that through with the roost. This is a high gloss um, gel coat on the outside with our uh, performance graphics as well. Uh, and then you're going to have the expedited ex expedition package as well as part of this, this roost. Um, and we, we can, I'm going to hit on a few things. Um, the 48 inch fireplace is a big one. Um, you're going to have a 72 by 80 king bed um, in your master bedroom. Um, the cool thing is, again, making sure this was functional and it felt spacey, right? We have the most square footage of, well, I'll say, I believe we have the most square footage of any fifth wheel out there. Now, this is RV industry, so I don't want to, don't know what somebody came out with yesterday, but the cool thing about that is you have six foot, eight inch clearance in all your main, your living room, your kitchen, your, your main bathroom, your bedroom, which is mm -hmm. more than sufficient for most of our customers unless we got a nba team um come to <laughs> so, yeah so yeah that's another another big one um so to hit on 48 inch fireplace i mean you name it we can sit here and 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 i could hit on every one of these i want to call out a couple of big things um so inside of the actual roost 43 detail was a must right we're gonna mm -hmm. come out with this we got to hit on all on all cylinders when it comes to the interior a lot of details so we worked with um one of our suppliers um on some hand hewn beams um the actual island on this is a butcher block island this is all handcrafted amish handcrafted um material your fascia your window trim all that is solid wood um, along with your cabinet doors and drawer fronts, solid wood fronts, so with soft closed drawers. So this is all stuff that you kind of expect, um, you know, in a in a higher higher end RV or home that that you you're going to get the longevity out of, and you know have, it's okay to have some luxuries every now and again. So we wanted to make sure we didn't hold back on any of that. Um, but I mean, the list goes on and on um, as far as you know your your overall uh features in this thing but the details as you probably saw when you were watching the video even the bathroom we've got a folding lift up folding table in there that's solid wood again you've got a clothes um bar in there with a nice um shelf hand hewn shelf again um mm -hmm. there's even a storage nook we had there to the left of the actual toilet um that you can provide storage with originally we didn't even have a door on that but we couldn't open the door into the toilet so we decided to put that on um drawer glides so you can slide that door over put your laundry detergent in there your toilet paper whatever it may be mm -hmm. um, in addition when we're talking about details 
how many times do you go underneath your main um, uh, sink in the bathroom and you got the two doors, right? You're going to reach for your your hairspray and it's falling. Everything falls back in the corner. You got to get down there. <laughs> so what we did yeah. here on the on the main bathroom, we actually put full drawers. Um, you can put dividers in there, organizational dividers. That way you just pull those drawers out. You can put your towels, all your cosmetics, anything you need in there. In addition, there's a little blank space where you normally have your sink and plumbing up at top. A lot of times in, in residential builds, you'll just put a, a blanked off panel there or face front. We wanted to utilize that space. You pull it down, you've got room for your toothbrushes and two little storage bins. So really it was all about the details. I mean, and, and this just doesn't come from, you know, looking at the roost. It comes from show notes, from other, you know, from our travel trailers, fifth wheels. What are the customers looking for? What are they, what do they actually want in an RV? We even went as far as to put a vanity um, ottoman in the bedroom. That comes standard with the roost. Um, I know my wife loves to sit down, do her makeup, doesn't want to do that on the bed or standing up in the bathroom. So mm -hmm. Um, we've carried that out through um, several models with our trailers too, on the bed slides with the ottoman. So again, this is um, one of those that you know, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of uh, little tweaks um, before we released it. It was a process to release it just to make sure we were in a good position to succeed and um, allow our customers to enjoy the product and, and make, it a, make it one of the best experiences they've had. Well, it's like I said, it's home on wheels at its finest, in my opinion. I mean, I've seen there's other ones like Cedar Creek just came out with that really nice one, uh, whatever. It's all like wood sided looking sure. that was yep. very pretty as well. But I mean, what, what else do you need? I mean, <laughs> it's got it's right. got all the amenities that you need for a home on wheels. If you especially if you're, you know, this is a, in my opinion, a glamping type RV. Right. Yeah, you, go, you park it at the lake. I, I see a lot of people in like the Midwest probably using something like this. They, um, they put it at their lake house and like, well, this is their lake house now. And why not? I mean, it's you could stay there for weeks or months on end. I'd do it. Park it down in Arizona even. Heck, <laughs> it makes Absolutely. sense to me. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. just a couple more things, Jake, that I wanted to I wanted to hit on here. Uh -huh. um, hey, you can kind of see the roof um, image there. Um, I mean, obviously having that roof pitch, that's going to carry all your water, any condensation, that's going to carry it to your off door side and mm -hmm. have no worries. Your top of your slides are all covered with your, your uh, slide out toppers. Yep. Um, we include that as part of our package on every single roost. Um, we talk a little bit about our high gloss um, gel coat here as well. Um, on the outside, you have a storage compartment with a his and her refrigerator. So plenty of room for beverages, kids, high seas, um, whatever it may be out on the uh, campground there. And with the design of the roost, okay, so this is not a typical fifth wheel again. There's there's stuff running where, where it normally doesn't run. Um, so when we're kind of going through this, our production team was like, man, we're not going to get a, a full pass through here. It's going to be a large storage area, which again is is makes it more more versatile adds to that um adds to the offering on the destination side but most of the time you don't get that storage on the outside of those so we're going to utilize that storage and you can see here on the image we did just didn't want to put a three-quarter storage area in there we actually put the the slide out tray the more ride slide out tray so you can put your totes in there you can slide that out access um your camping goods or chairs, mm -hmm. whatever you need to. Um, also on the roof, and you see right there in the in the pass-through area, that's a charge controller. So yeah, we did put a 200 watt solar panel on the actual roof of this this unit. Now again, customers will say, "Well, I'm, I'm plugging in." Well, if you're not, the nice thing is if you're getting your unit ready to um, go out camping, you don't have to plug in with a battery pack or anything. Your your 200 watt panel should charge your batteries. You can turn the unit on, run your slides in and out. Um, then I'll also start cooling down your refrigerator. So um, why not, right? We're giving the yeah. customer the panel. Um, if they don't choose to utilize it, they don't have to, but you can go up to 590 watts on the roof with that through your cable entry plate. It's just plug and play um, if you want, if you chose to add more um, solar to the actual unit. Awesome. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to hit on this um, 
the, the slider door, right? So characteristics of um, a destination is the big slider door, not only for your views to the lake, whatever it may be, but just gives you um, a better point of entry. Um, comes with a screen door, but we decided to go with a triple slider on this roost. Um, and so you can see the impact that has on the exterior. And also when you're sitting in there at your um, big island bar, if you will, comes with five bar stools um, where you can sit there and play cards, feed the, the family, very you know congregating place where you can um, enjoy each other. That's right there by that view um, on the triple slider as well. Guys, cool. Yeah, this thing, this thing's neat. So we come coming down here. I talked about the slide toppers a little bit. 20, 20 foot awning is standard on every single roost. In addition with the with the slide toppers, um, it does come with a twenty one um, k Rhino box. It's a, a very absorption friendly um, uh, box on the front. Your pen box. Um, and then we come to the off door side here, you're going to see your actual um, docking station. Um, mm -hmm. All of your dump valves and everything is built into this docking station. So you just come right here. There's no reaching underneath your unit. Um, that's all accessible on the off door side with a water filtration system as well. Again, not cutting any, any corners here when it comes to uh, the build of the roost. Yeah, it make, makes it convenient too. A lot of people don't understand that, like, you know, you get those gray tank and black tank levers in different spots underneath the trailer, yep. getting hand, hands and knees. If it's all in one central location, it makes everything so much easier. Absolutely. So a couple more, I mean, we talk about details again. I probably should have slid down here when I was talking about the bathroom, but you can see on the actual image here, the bathroom or any of the walkthrough videos, your, your folding rack there, your Clothes rod, your washer and dryer are actually in um, the main bathroom, but tucked away nicely. Um, so above the washer dryer, again, different build. That's your hallway going down to your second loft, um, and that's going to be your your main, or, or I should say, it's going to have a 66 by 80 custom king bed mattress up there. Um, also prepped for a TV, so you can put a 32 inch TV there. Um, there is a curtain. Um, as well um, that offers privacy and not only that I don't see a well I do right here as your your kitchen image again you can see the, the plethora of space the windows um, above the slide but you see the um, you have two louvered doors up there and that's actually going up to your bunk room um, these are something you see in beach beachy homes this is you can close those off if you want for privacy leave them open for a little ventilation Again, this is one of those things we challenged our um, suppliers to, to help us out with. They came through and um, just adds that extra little detail to the actual model. Um, in addition, you know, this is, again, more long term stay, extended stay, if you will. Um, we put a large floating shelf above the main slide um, kitchen slide box there. Um, this is something where, you know, plants and um, vases you know, wine bottles, whatever you choose to put up there um, is 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 all right there for you. Again, more residential um, and add, adds that difference um, in your unit that that um, is definitely going to pay off. Worked a couple of shows with this already and, you know, folks are in there purchasing and they're like, oh, I'm going to put this up on that shelf. I'm going to put that up on that shelf. I said, the only don't just don't call me when you get you get all frustrated when there's several people wanting to come into your unit to check it out and but so far they've been okay with that but <laughs> yeah yeah, um, yeah. Ooh, and then, uh, <laughs> you can see all the beams in here again this is all i mean when it comes to these beams you you know we got it's all tied in with uh, one of our our steel suppliers they created all these hats and brackets and um, metal um, extrusion for the exterior i mean this is all custom built and engineered um, so one of the things, you know, working with them, um, is just, Hey, you know, we might have 30 parts on this. Let's, let's get it all in line on a, on a, on a quote. So we can just click a button, order one for a set for each unit. So a lot of thought went into this with purchasing production, um, on how to, how to streamline it. So we can focus on building a, a quality product, have, have our parts here in a timely manner and, um, you know, execute the build. So. Um, talk a little bit about the ACs here. We, we already hit on that um, washer dryer and your JBL system. Um, 
have some uh, very interesting um, conversation about the L sofa here. So this L sofa, we wanted to maximize the seating in this living room. So we challenged our supplier to, um, hey, how do we how do we make it easy for our customers when they when they want to run the slide in to be able to get that sofa out of the way right now in the out position you run that slide in you're going to hit your spiral large spiral staircase that goes up to your main loft in the rear mm -hmm. so what we decided to do um through the the help of our um supplier is hey can we can we you know put this on a hinge mechanism this is what they recommended um something new so right where that l comes in in the corner there's a little um pivot hinge is what we call it and the the portion coming out of the slide out there on your l sofa that just is on casters what you do is you take your coffee table out of the way that whole side rolls right in the two sofas will face each other they have a blocking bracket there then you run your slide in um some folks are even talking hey we're gonna put that in after you know once we have this we're gonna put that in and, you, and have our kids sleep in it it's a it's a way to make a larger bed too um underneath the actual sofa um cushions um is is storage we utilize that as all storage underneath there and maximize the comfort of this couch man it's it's pretty darn comfortable found a lot of people um at our shows and showings and whatnot just kind of lounging around didn't quite want to get up but um, that's one of the things we really wanted to focus on here was making it comfortable, mm -hmm. um, in the living room as well. You'll see the coffee table. Um, this is one of those things that, you know, everybody's like, how do we get the coffee table with it? Well, actually you do. This is not just a, you know, decor piece we yeah. the coffee table. We'll ship that. Um, we normally ship that when the sofa's in the, um, in the folding in position, we'll ship that upside down in there. So it's nice and secure. Um, there is an end table as well in that living room where the JBL subwoofer is built into. So that's all that's all um, compact and all in there for you as well. Again, residential um, feel, your sleeping spaces. So again, 530 square feet, we wanted to focus on that. So we've up in the main rear loft, you have two 30 inch by 74 inch um, loft mats. Now that doesn't mean you can't put whatever you want up there. We do include that though um, with the actual roost. You can put a 40 inch TV up in that main loft as well. It's all prepped. I'm ready to go for satellite cable. Um, I mentioned the, the, the second loft, which has a 66 by 80 custom King bed mattress. And then as you go into the bedroom, it's a 72 by 80 um, King bed. Um, and again, your ceiling height in there is very, very um, spacious. Um, and we wanted to really focus, uh, Jake, on the, a lot of times you'll get into fifth wheels and trailers and, you know, you got to get out of the bed from the front end, if you will. Um, not very comfortable. So we mm -hmm. wanted to focus on having a lot of space on each side of the bed. So it's maneuverable. You can get into the drawers easy enough. Um, and it doesn't feel like you're in a cave or, you know, kind of, you know, putting your hip out to get out of bed. Um, yeah. your lighting experience. I mean, this is, this is something across the board. Again, we focused on through all hemisphere heritage Glen products. Your backlit mirrors are going to be in both bathrooms. So up in the bedroom, we do have the half bath. Um, that way, you know, mom or dad, whoever's sleeping up there doesn't have to necessarily come downstairs to the main bath. Um, at night, you get the half bath in there right inside of the, um, the main bedroom, all your switches, um, are on dimmers now um, cool. with the exception of your with the exception of your slide boxes um, but they're all on dimmer switches so you can again set the mood in there make it cozy on a movie night um, you're going to have that throughout the the series not only just the roost um, flush floor slides this is something um, we sometimes you know have to call out to to our retail customers um, hey did you notice the the kitchen slide here is flush a lot of times there's a build up there and it's a toe knocker when you're trying to turn that stake over or whatever it may be. Um, our team's been focusing on the, this flush floor um, slide. We actually worked with our supplier, designed us an actual pan for that 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 slide floor to drop into um, where it's seamless, right? Um, you don't have any bump up there and it's just a better camping experience as a whole and offers you more 
um, of a, uh, if you will, like a continuous space and doesn't break it up as much. Mm -hmm. um, talked about the half bath a little bit um, up in front. Again, you, little details. We got some shelves in here, some steel shelves that you can put Q-tips in a, in a mason jar, put them up there out of the way, toothbrushes, towel hook is, is standard in there as well. These both porcelain toilets, um, foot flush toilets, and uh, we do have a window in that bathroom as well. Um, I know a lot of customers like to have that, that window. It's not too low. It's a good spot there. Obviously, you're up on the upper deck anyway, so it, um, you're not going to be bearing all to all. But on the bottom of this, um, and, and I'm sure my guys have shared with um, your team there at BISH so they can relay this to the customers as well. There's a hype video on the Roost 43, and there's some additional information on these um, these QR codes as well. So um, luckily, we got a phenomenal team um, in house here that puts all this together. Um, again, you know the technology side. We'll leave that to them. We'll just keep on designing a great product on the on the production and and management side. Well, it's an absolutely awesome product. I would, there's one here in Meridian. I'm going to go check it out here. Um, you said, are you good on sharing your screen right now? I can kick that out of here. Yeah, yeah, you can kick that out of there. Yeah, sweet. So the one thing I wanted to hit on is the uh, the L-shaped sofa that hinges. That's that's new. That's that's huge. I mean, I, I know you know you see like a lot of the toy haulers are the ones that have like here. Let's get all the couches we can possibly get in there, and then like you when you're in road mode or travel mode, <laughs> they're stacked and awkwardly on top of right. each other. And it's not exactly an easy way to travel, so that's super cool. I, I, that's I, that's a very uh, innovative way of going about it, and it's actually a simple way of going about it. Surprise, no one's ever thought of that before. You know? Yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. uh, we can't take all the credit. That's one of those things you you sit there and how do we do this? And and our suppliers, you know, are our partners as well, and we ask them for a solution, and and they go to work. And um, at the end of the day, we have to make it manageable. This this could be a you know. Um, older couple that you know doesn't necessarily want to throw furniture around like you said um it just mm -hmm. takes a finger to roll that that couch in when it's in the unlocked position so um works out very well um that's what this is all about um innovating and innovate innovation can be great but it's also got to be functional and mm -hmm. um thought think think this is um executed that as a whole yeah, it really seems that way. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go check this thing out here. My might before the end of the day, just because it's so damn sweet. And like uh, you did mention, you did mention that floor plans and models. There's gonna be a couple other ones coming out, sure. maybe. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna come. Be, we're gonna obviously um, give our give our production team time to uh, you know celebrate this one, just like any any. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, well executed model, um, but we want to be ready and we want to offer, um, um, continue to offer innovative products and, and functional products and um, with the roost, um, in addition to travel trailers and fifth wheels in general. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, easy now. <laughs> going in that fall season, got the harvest yeah, going on right. over there. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I struggle all the time with that, but uh so it is about, you said, the, the I, I messed up on the dry weight earlier. The dry weight's around 50, 15, 3, yep. uh, some three-quarter tons if uh, if optioned out properly would be just mm -hmm. fine. Uh, one ton dually, personally, if I was going to be doing it just for extra stability. Uh, yep. This thing's big. It's tall. What is it, 13-something tall? 13.5 at your top of your ACs, correct. That's really not bad. I've heard, I've heard taller, so um, yep. that is insane that you fit that much in that much in that amount of space you got a 101 inch body and then 43 foot nine was it yeah 43 nine's the, the overall length there's some other um things that allowed us to do that um the overall square footage um unfortunately i can't share all the, the yeah. details to the recipe that. um you know this is one of those that uh you know our production team figured out um along with with everyone involved and and uh mm -hmm. You know, it's it's we'll hold on to it as long as we can get it. Obviously, the RV RV industry, we're just going to try to stay ahead. Right. We're going to come out with um, innovative um, models, again, functional models that that pair with the Roost 43. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, 
and enjoy it and, and stay ahead of the game. I really liked the last couple of years. I mean, I went to open house in 2023. You know, the view was the big thing. You know, I was a Ford Trooper product, and that's Salem Wildwood, all those. And um, I appreciate the innovate, uh, the innovativeness, I guess, that's mm -hmm. happening in the RV community because it's been that, I mean, basically been the same thing for decades. And now it's like, hey, how can we be different? Because everyone's just copycat, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Now yeah. it's like, all right. It's getting interesting, <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I, I really like that. Is there anything else you want to share? I mean, I, I, the only other question I had, uh, I guess with the slope roofing, I'm guessing you have little gutters on the one side for sure. Yep. Uh, is it TPO, PVC, anything? Yeah, so your, your actual roof material is PVC. Okay. Um, that's the, the Dicor Tuflex. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Uh, yeah, that's all PVC. Now on the side, when you're when you're coming on the side of the roost on the on the door side, it's actually capped with metal, so you can't really see the the roof on that side. You'll be able to see your PVC on the off door side. Um, but yeah, and and not to mention too, we're using uh, the Moisture Cure um, uh, uh, self leveling adhesive. That's that stuff is something we implemented um, about a year ago um, through all Salem Wildwood products. Um, this stuff is phenomenal. Um, it, 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 it almost eliminates the gassing. Um, so what that means is, you know, let's say you have a skylight or whatever that might be broken, you need to replace that. You're not just scraping that, that, that moisture cure off. You're cutting around it because it's fixed. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously we recommend um, checking your seals twice a year um, at minimum just to maintain, just like anything you'd have your car. Um, but it puts us in a lot better position for that customer experience and, and um, seals and everything like that. So just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And right now, as of now, standard washer dryer uh, coming with it. What was the other standard option that's coming with it for so now? The washer dryer um, and your third low profile AC is part of our um, roost kickoff package, if you will. Um, so the units that are going to be out in the field right now will have that for a, for a limited time. So um, just encourage customers. I know um, there has been a large majority of the the, the units we've built um, that are retail sold. Um, but just just um, one of those things that we're offering as appreciation to our dealers and uh, partners with the Roost um, out of the gate here to get it kicked off. Yeah, it is an awesome product. It's a uh... I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see more from what's coming down the road. Obviously, it's going to take time. These things don't happen overnight, uh, as uh, I know, <laughs> being right. part of being a part of issues and being a part of uh, some uh, label launches. So, uh, Nick, is there anything else that you want to share about the roost? Um, I don't think so. You know, I think we hit on a lot of things. Um, I would I would just say um, if you if you look up the roost forty three, I know Josh the RV nerds videos out. Um, on, a, on several several links, um, make sure you check it out. I mean, it, it, it's something to, to see. Um, hopefully, um, your guys' is, is maybe there for a couple of days so customers mm -hmm. can come in and see it. I know some of our dealers have gone to the point of, you know, hey, we're going to hold this one here mm -hmm. and we're going to, you know, well, you'll get the next one. Um, it's just one of those things. There are, there are some customers just like me that, sometimes have to touch and feel things in order to make a um, investment purchase. Um, but um, they, they, we've been shipping um, consistently on these. They're in full production um, for the last month. And um, we're excited. We are excited. I'm excited that you uh, asked me to come on here, Jake. I think I do recognize you from uh, Open House. Um, I think we might have met. Yeah, yeah when, I, when you got on here, I was like, yeah, you kind of look yep, familiar. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Your crew that came up so yeah we're we're very appreciative um appreciate um the bish as always as a as a partner um phenomenal partner phenomenal um you know one of the things with with bish that i always love is is taking care of the customer after the sale and um you know through your management team your ownership that was voiced out of the opinion when you guys kicked off our uh, when you guys kicked off um and and started bish um years back and you've held true to that and we appreciate that it makes it um enjoyable on our end and reputable and um yeah so thank you thank you all much appreciated and likewise to you guys um well 
if that's everything you got to share, I am, I'm good. I got no more questions for you. I, there's not a whole lot about this yet out there. I didn't go through Josh's questions. Sometimes I go really kind of rifle through those, but it sounds to me like you answered everything that I was looking for. Uh, the only one thing it was like, can, what do you have to have to tow it? But you answered that quite shortly on right. into the beginning of it. So, um, this is everything you need to know about the 2025 Roos 43 straight from the horse's mouth. The guy that's named after. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> you can roll with that. Yeah, uh, basically. But if there's nothing else, Nick Ross, thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate it. And everybody out there, do you have anything more you want to learn from or learn about, put it in the comments. You can uh, follow us. Please follow us. And we're going to be sharing things about RV manufacturers, RV influences. We're going to start branching out into the RV space, uh, camping space in general. So uh, whether it be camping gear, camping equipment, everything that involves camping, we're going to be reaching out and do that too. So stay tuned for more from the RV Voice. <laughs> <laughs>